Hi everyone, it's Tammy, and today I'm going to show you how to make a peekaboo card. This is a really cute card, and you can find instructions other places as well. It's been a long time since I made it, and I saw the inspiration when I was looking up cards on Pinterest, and I thought, oh my gosh, I have to make this again, and I just fell in love with it. And I think that you guys will too. So it looks like there's a cake right now, but then you open it up and there's a monkey. It's just adorable so fun and I needed to make a couple birthday cards so that is what I'm going to make with you guys I have um, already cut my three pieces of cardstock which is what it takes to make this you'll see there's one piece of cardstock two pieces of cardstock and then actually this is a third piece so this is one this is one and this is one so three pieces of cardstock to make this so it takes about a Two pieces of eight and a half by 11 paper to make the whole thing I'm thinking about it uh, and then it's very helpful if you have some sort of uh, oh what's this called like framelits like I don't know if you have like a two inch punch and a two and a quarter inch punch or something like that it's very helpful to have two different sizes of design. It doesn't have to be a circle. It could be a square or a frame or a heart or whatever you wanted it to be. Uh, it's just helpful to have two sizes. And I happen to be using these framelits from Stampin' Up! And I used uh, these two sizes for mine. But again, it kind of depends on what stamp set you're using and all of that jazz. You just want two different sizes. And I will show you that here in just a second. So there are, there's a front piece an inside piece and a back piece. The front piece is cut at four and a quarter by eight and a quarter. So you cut this four and a quarter by eight and a quarter. So what I do is I take my eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper and I cut it in half at four and a half and then I cut this down so it's eight and a quarter. So four and a quarter, eight and a quarter. And then you wanna score it at two and three quarters. So I'm going to just put this in here at two and three quarters and score that. And this is going to be the front of the card because this will measure your five and a half by four and a quarter regular A2 sized card, which this is going to turn out to be. So that's the front. Then the inside piece you want, let me just get both of them out. The inside piece you want to cut at four and a quarter by eight and a half. So this is eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. If you um, cut it in half, you'll have four and a quarter, and then you want eight and a half. So I'm going to score this one in half. So this one's going to be scored at four and a quarter. And this is gonna make just a little square. So it's a little square and you can go ahead and burnish it too if you want to. I didn't do that one on that, but I will. So the front, the inside, and then the back. You need to cut the back at four and a quarter by five and three quarters. And then I'm going to score this at five and a half. So it just gets a little tab. Sorry. I was thinking that doesn't look like a big enough tab. Five and three quarters. So um, you cut this at five and three quarters. You score it at five and a half. So it gives you just a little tab here. Is that right? Five and three quarters scored at five and a half. Yeah, okay. So this piece just has a little tab. And so let me show you how these are gonna work. This is the front of the card. This is the inside of the card. So when it opens, it would open this way. And then this is the back of the card. And it's going to open, or it's going to be attached here. So when you open it, you'll open the card to here. 
And if you can see what's happening is that front flap is sliding over and that's what's going to be the mechanism that makes the inside a different picture. Isn't that kind of cool? So whoop, it's going to be a little different. So what, um, and I also wanted to put a front piece of paper on the front of my card. You could make it a different color card stock or whatever you might want. I just wanted to put a different color and I had this cute paper pad from Doodlebug Designs and I need to use more of my paper pads. So this one is adorable. There's no reason why I shouldn't be using that. So I wanted to use that. So I went ahead and picked out a piece of cardstock for my front. So the card that I'm going to make with you guys is going to open this way. So I'm kind of excited about that. So what I did is I found, I figured out where I wanted to put my image. So you're going to need to have your image and you want to, when you're deciding on where you want your image, you do need to take into consideration that this is going to fold out. So you kind of want it to be past this. And then you also kind of want it to be, um, you just don't want it to be in the mechanism. So I don't know if you can see this little circle here. I'll show you in a little bit why that's there because you don't normally have to do that. But because of how I did it, I had to cut a little bit out because you could see it when it was closed like this. So anyway, what you'll do is you will take your smallest ring that you want to use. So that whatever fits inside of here, whatever image you want to show. So whatever image you want right here, you want to cut out a circle or a square or whatever to make it fit that image. So it's going to be right here. It's the it actually fits both images, but fits the image. And then um, to the front of the card. So the front piece of the card with the flap behind you, you're going to want to cut this to match this. So I will line this up and I will use my framelit. Oops, that's the smaller one. So I used this size and this size. So I used the smaller of the two sizes that I picked out and I'm going to line this up like this and I will run this through my die cut machine. And from the beauty of television, I went ahead and did that. So I have the same piece of paper. I've ran it through my die cut machine so it matches up with this. And I haven't scored or I haven't burnished this yet. So now this one over here because I can use it for another card but um, and you can see kind of what I'm talking about here you can see that flap and so I'm going to want to cut that off because I don't want that to necessarily show and to do that I just use a little punch so it would have been a little better if I would have scooted this down a little bit and maybe I picked out too big of a image because my ring is too big but it's okay I'll make it work. I'm just going to set this in here and pop that out. So now when it's closed, I won't be able to see that. Does that make sense? I'm sure it does. So I just have a little boop in there. Now I also need my hole to go through that inside piece as well. It needs to go through both sheets of the inside piece because this is the inside piece. So I need it to go through both of these. So what I do is I line this up. You could even, if you wanted to, go ahead and glue it on if your die cut machine is super strong um, and cut through both sheets at the same time. But I didn't do that. What I did is I just... Um, held it together like this and then I put the die on top and then I put it in my die cut machine and I run it through and usually even with these two it cuts the top one enough 
that I can know where to put it on the second one and then I can run it through a second time if you need to. On some of them it would cut both of them, on some of them it hasn't. So I guess it depends on how thick your cardstock is too. On this one it didn't cut both of them but it um, gave me a nice place where I knew where to put the second one. And then I ran that through as well. So then I had so this is this piece, the inside piece, now has two holes in it. Yay, because I already did the die cutting. So now all three of these, the front, the inside, and the cover, I'm calling this the cover, all fit and match up nicely with the hole in it. And then the last piece, I don't want to put a hole in this last piece, but what I do want to do is put some tape on this side extra strong so that I know that it will hold onto the card. So I use, oh, what is it? I'll just do this one with you guys. I use this double-sided white tape. And I just wanna put it along the edge. of this and then I just cut it with a little cutter and then I always use my bone folder to make sure that I get this on there really good so then this is the back piece and I want to stick the back piece onto the inside piece and I need to be careful to make sure that I have it the right way. So you're opening the card, whichever way, but it needs, the opening needs to go toward the uh, tape. Then you'll remove the tape cover. And then the easiest way I think to do it is to open this up and to open this up and just line them up together on the score line. And press that down really well. So now my card looks like this, but then I still need to attach my top part. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to open it up and I'm going to just attach the top to the inside piece and I can just use regular glue for this or you could use your double-sided tape, whatever you like. I don't do anything with the little flap that's on the front. That has to stay clean, no glue on that. I'm just lining this up with the hole and then with the front of the card, making sure that I have it all matching up. Oh, and I was a dingbat. Okay, don't do what I just did. Put the glue on the inside piece because you don't want it on this part. <sighs> Crafting in real life, people. I forgot that the inside piece isn't as long as the rest of this, so you don't want it to be that long. I have a gum eraser here, and this kind of helps erase glue. Just so it won't be sticky anymore. So just put the glue on the inside piece and then stick it down to the front. So now I have all three pieces attached. I have the back, the little flap, the inside, and then the front with its flap. And this flap doesn't have anything on it and this flap is going to go on the inside of the card and it's gonna go like that. So the back flap or the back Kind of fl flaps in the back and then the front flap flaps in the middle and then you open the card and it does this and I just got my nail polish on it but that's okay because I'm going to cover it so now you want the bigger ring or actually let me go ahead and put this on there too 
because I'm doing a card front, I'm going to put this on there. You don't have to do this part. You could just decorate the front however you wanted. So I did uh, get my happy birthday stamp and I stamped that and I heat embossed it in black. Oh no, I didn't, in crystal blue. I almost did black, but then I decided on the blue. And you can't probably see it very well in the camera. I'm just trying to line this up. And if you do one of these cards, make sure that you pick a, the right orientation for the front however you want it. This was a six by six, so it could have gone either way. But I wanted to make one this way just because I thought it would be kind of different. And I've made a bunch of these. I made some Christmas cards already using this theory and I have those. So then what you want to do is with the bigger, so you, you need something that's a little bigger. It doesn't have to be a circle. It could be a square. Even on this, it doesn't matter. You're not going to see it. You just want it to be a little bigger. The only thing that I used the that you will see, I thought it would be cute to have a little outline on this uh, circle. So I did take both of these together and run it through my die cut with this blue cardstock so that I got a little ring that I can put around this. Again, that's totally optional. You don't have to do that. But I, because I have the set, I just thought it would be nice to go ahead and cut my circles out of bigger, out of, or my stamped images out of bigger circles as well. I could have made it a square or whatever, like I just said. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be a circle if you're doing circles. It doesn't have to be like you have to have two, two hearts or two hexagons or whatever. But if you have them, then just use the bigger size and cut out another piece of paper. And this is what you're going to stamp your images that you're going to see. So you stamp and color those. So that's what that is. And I'm going to put this little ring on. I think I am if I can get my glue to not stick. It's because I have a big glue glob on the end that I need to pick off. Okay, so then I'm just going to put this right around the circle. For me, it's helpful if I put my fingers in the circle and just kind of move this around a little bit. That's kind of how I was doing it to make sure that they were all matching up to. So then the image that you want to see from here, like when the image is closed, needs to go on this piece of cardstock. So you can see when you open it up that this is the back flap. So I want the image that I can see at the beginning on the back flap. And I wanted this image to be on my back flap. And I have another image I thought, oh yes, okay, I'm going to say I thought I cut something else out. I have this other little um, tiger that I colored and cut out too, and I'm going to put him right here. So I thought that would be cute, just the two little guys together, and then there's going to be a cake. Or if I wanted to, I could put the cake here, and then the monkey is what you see when you open it up. Um, I think I'm going to go with my original plan and do the monkey on the inside. So I am going to go ahead and put glue on the back of my monkey. And the easiest way I have found to do this is to just put this in the window where you want it and then close it down. So now it's stuck onto the back flap. Now I can close my flap in and put it the way it's supposed to. Now what I like to do is open it and then I know this is where my next image is going to go. And because I had to cut that little piece off right here, I need to be careful that I don't put glue there and get it stuck on there. But I know that this is where I want this image. So I kind of just look at it and eyeball it. Put it where I want it. 
and this is why it doesn't have to be a circle. Now I'm holding it down and I'm going to pull up that part of the card because this is where I need this to go. So you can see that there's two things going on here. One is this is where it folds and two, this is where I had to cut it a little bit. So my image might be a little bigger than what you would ideally want, but that's no problem. I found out that when I use my tape runner, I can get it to fold a little easier than when I use glue. So I am going to use my tape runner and that actually makes it a little easier for getting the tape off too when I, if I get any down here, which I think I will. Because I'd rather have too much tape than not enough tape, so I am taping the dickens out of it. And then I'm going to take this, the whole thing, fold it down, or hold it down so I can see what it looks like. And then now with just the top flap, I'm not doing a very good job of showing you. With this top flap, I'm going to fold, here we go, I'm going to fold this down onto that. So then now, this is on that portion. Hopefully I'm making sense. It's on that inside piece that's going to poke through the top. And I'm just trying to make sure that it looks, oh, it's because it's not, Oh, it's not bent, so I need to also fold this. I'm not doing a very good job of explaining it and doing it at the same time. I'm sorry, guys. Hopefully you guys are seeing what I'm doing as well. So many different things go on to make it a certain way, and when you screw up that way, that's part of the issue. And I screwed up that way by making this image a little too big, so I have to fold it on this little burnish line. And I'm adding a little bit of glue now to that piece. And then if there's any glue down here, which miraculously there isn't any of my double-sided tape, but if there were, I could just pull that off. Okay, so now I believe, well, and you know what? Now I can see that little bit of, I could either leave that or, you know me, I'm going to take my hole punch and punch just that little piece off too. So I'm just gonna put this in here and barely punch it. But get that little piece off so that when it's closed, I don't see it. So now I don't see anything up there. And then when I open it, this will slide down and you can see just the cake. So I guess what I was trying to say, and I wasn't doing a very good job, is when you are putting the image there, before I stick it down, I like to make sure I know where it's going to be stuck to, like what piece it's going to be stuck to, either the inside of this or the back. And then I like to use that as my reference for the card so that I can fold the card on top of it and know that it's hitting exactly the right spot. That's all I was trying to say, and I wasn't doing a very good job of explaining it. But let me take my glue and finish up this card by putting my little tiger on here. I didn't even tell you what set I'm using. I'm sorry. Put him down. This is the Birthday Monkeys set from Mama Elephant. It's got lots of monkeys, and then it has this one tiger and then it has the cake. It doesn't have any sentiments, so if you want to sentiment, you need to use something else, um, or you could hand letter it or whatever. But I'm using the happy birthday sentiment that I got from um, Stampin' Up. It's a stylized birthday. It's an oldie, but a goodie. This is it. It's one of my wooden stamps that I don't want to get rid of because I like it. And it's a nice big stamp. So that's stamped happy birthday. On this card, I used handwritten borders from Simon Says Stamps, and I just used the happy birthday, and I did do that one in black. So here's this one again. Oops. And I added a couple rhinestones to that, and I am going to do the same with this, I think. Why not, right? Let me put 
put my lid on my glue. And I will use a bigger rhinestone for this guy's hat. Oh, and he has a star, and I happen to have some star rhinestones. If I use this one, I think you can still see a little pink border, which might be cute. Oh, no, actually, it covered it up just perfectly. That's okay, though. Oh my goodness, it's just too cute. I think these cards are just the coolest. And you know what? I think I might use some Wink of Stella, like crystal-y things. And let's do his balloon, or her balloon, whatever. And this balloon. Maybe the hat. And whatever parts of the cake you might want to do, or however you want to do it. Maybe just the whole cake. I mean, why not? Sparkle it up. There we go. Super cute. And hopefully that you guys it's so cute I just love this card and then there's still plenty of room to write whatever you could even stamp happy birthday inside whatever you might want but here is this one and here's the one that I did earlier with the birthday and let me show you one of my Christmassy ones this is one of my Christmas cards for this year and that cute so hmm so many different things you can do you just need a little bit more paper than a normal card and a little more stamps I guess uh, just because you're using a little bit more but it's just adorable and it's super easy and it fits into a regular sized envelope and it folds flat so it works out really well so hope you guys like that I hope it helped gave you some inspiration and I'd love to see if you guys make one and I will talk to you guys soon. Thanks so much for watching. Sorry it was a little confusing. It's a little more complicated than most. But I think I got it across. Have a great day. Bye-bye.